Welcome to the Leader's Journey Podcast. I'm your host, Joel Gunn. Today I have with me Flavio. Flavio, welcome to the show. Thank you. We are very honored to have you and Christine over here in Brazil. <laughs> it's our pleasure and our honor. Uh, yes, yeah, so to the viewing audience, we're here in Brazil on a retreat. And so I just met Flavio for the first time yesterday. And as he was telling me a little bit about his story, I thought he'd be a great, great person to have on the show. So you were saying you're married, you got a couple of kids, young kids. Yeah. Uh, you own two businesses. Yeah. Uh, one is the family business, been around 25 years or so. Mm -hmm. And you joined that business, uh, 2005, you said? 2009. Nine. Okay, yeah. 2009. Uh, tell us just a minute or so about that business, but I really want to spend the most of the time talking about the leadership uh, business that you have. Uh -huh. Okay. So my father um, founded the, bus the business uh, in 1998. It is um, cleaning and janitorial services. Uh, we are contractors. Uh, we have about today about like uh, 200 employees. Wow. Uh, the, the company experimented uh, rapid growth uh, in the beginning of 2010. So one thing that we, uh, when the company was growing, um, I, I was looking like, oh my God, I have to structure all of this. Uh, we didn't have like processes. Uh, I think it's normal for, for a, a small business that is becoming like a medium, a medium, a medium company. So I had to start structuring and uh, came out uh, from, from, a few concepts like how to structure a business and i think it it, it kind of ended uh for me uh with my experiences in doing this uh to starting my my other company which is like which is more like uh, consultancy businesses uh helping leaders to to have high performing teams mm -hmm. and it goes from from structures to mindsets to tools, mm -hmm. and that's I think it ended up when in we talking about lean and Six Sigma and all all these things. Or before the show, we were talking, and you said so often you've seen businesses rush off to change their processes or their policies or implement new technology. They rarely start with helping the people change yeah. their, their mindsets or uh -huh. culture. What are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, uh, um, I felt that in my skin. Uh, I started to implementing things and this is, the, the, um, this is how uh, things are going to work. This is the structure. This is how are we going to make things. And I didn't get by him because I I didn't focus on the mindsets, on preparing the terrain, to having conversations, mm -hmm. and I I do believe that um, one thing a, le a leader can do before starting implementing cha changes is to look at the team and and have this reflection. It's like my team. It's not that my team is ready because they will never be, but is my team. Um, is my team, does my team have the maturity? Like, can we have conversations mm -hmm. about it? Mm -hmm. Can we say that I need help? Can, can we say that, oh, I don't think this is going to work? I think that this maturity, like it's a, like psychological safety, mm -hmm. it's totally necessary to start implementing changes. And as you've, you've obviously tried a few different things, some have worked better than others. As you go now into companies, how do you how do you start? Where do you recommend the companies? Start? Well, I came from 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 one from uh, from one side to the uh, completely other side. Let me explain what I'm saying. When I started to implementing changes, I started to 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 put on a, um, a hierarchy. So I, I was like, okay. This is how it's going to be. I'm going to be um, the manager. We are going to have people below me. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work. Then I started to study some crazy concepts about holacracy and sociocracy and self-managed teams. And I was like, 
okay, this is the this is the the way it's going to be. So it's a it's a new concept. People are not used to it, to, to this. So uh, I I didn't uh, consider this. So it, it didn't go well. It really didn't go well. So I had to take one step, two steps, three, three steps before, uh, and started to to have these conversations. Are we ready for it? Are we ready for to have the self-managed teams? Mm. And, the, and the answer was that we weren't. We simply weren't ready. And we can't push things beyond what people are ready. Mm. So it was uh, something to uh, that I took lessons from it. Mm. And now we are more like um, we are running the company not as a hierarchy, but as teams. So we have these um, leaders of teams, more like teams of teams, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's running, it's, it's going very well. It's, uh, I think we found the, the, the sweet spot that, uh, that um, makes the balance between uh, power and hierarchy and autonomy. Mm. Well, without giving away too much of your uh, secret recipe, <laughs> the, a lot of our viewers are business leaders. Uh -huh. If they're if they're converting from uh, more of a hierarchy and they desire to go team based, what what's some advice you give them in the early stages? I would definitely say that um, you have to prepare the ground, and the way to prepare the ground is through psychological safety. You can't uh, go with that radical changes in your team or in your company without having psychological safety. Uh, this willingness to to have conversations, uh, to to feel that it it is okay to make mistakes, mm. you won't be held against it, you won't be punished for it. I think the the start of all of this, you have to implement uh, psychological safety. It's something that I learned, something that I implemented, and I can. I can tell that uh, it's a good start. Mm. It's a good place to start to have the psychological safety. And as a leader, how do you how do you implement psychological safety? Like, what's yeah. that? Is that meetings? Is <clears throat> it get up and make speeches? Yeah. First of all, I think that you have to understand that the natural thing is for a team to not have psychological safety. Mm. Uh, it's better for uh, a person on the team to uh, to not uh, say something. Like, if I stay quiet, it's best for me. Mm -hmm. Just let me do whatever was told for me to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, in this scenario, you, you, you don't have innovation. You don't have uh, successful changes because the agendas, they all, everybody has their own agendas and they they kept internal. They, you don't uh, uh, show it. Um, and so I think one way to implement it's like um, to have this understanding. So you have to be active. In like It's not like saying, oh, my door is always open. You can come here and talk to me. It won't make psychological safety. You have to, to make it necessary for a person. Mm. And it, well, it goes all the way to your behaviors, um, the way you conduct meetings. It's something like, uh, okay, uh, this is the answer. Does anyone, uh, does anyone have a different view? Okay, no one's going to, to say that, uh, okay, I have a different point of view. It's different to say that, okay, what are the different points of view? What are the, the, the um, um, what are the other options? You you make you make open questions. You may you you invite them to speak up. Mm. You 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 don't have you can't have uh, that taken for granted. You have to to make a an environment that is safe to speak. Have you ever had an employee take a risk, speak up, and their idea is just really stupid or won't work? Yes, it happens. <laughs> and, uh, how, how do you respond in that situation? Uh, the first thing you have to respond is to acknowledge that he, he or her took a risk in speaking up. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you have to, to do is to um, recognize that. It's like, thank you for sharing. 
you said that a lot of times in our in our retreat here. Everybody, every time that um, someone spoke, said that, oh, this happened in my life. I saw, I saw you saying a lot of times. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for speaking up. And I think that's the best way to start mm. creating this environment. That's good. So is there a gestation period that this, this idea of psychological safety, is it, are we talking weeks? Are we talking months? Like how, in the companies that you consult, uh -huh. how, how long does that, does that initial phase of kind of creating that safe environment? Well, I think it's, um, if I could guess, you have to, well, first of all, it, it is a journey. It's a journey that will never end. And we, I, I have this understanding that psychological safety, it is like a, a, a crystal that if you break, it's hard to, to, to get it back. So I don't know. It's a process. Once you start, you, you can never go, go back, you know? <laughs> employees are constantly checking if it's still real. Yeah. Hmm. And plus you bring new employees in. And do you find that, um, do you start to see changes in the culture right away as people start to feel safe or does that, is there still some lag? Oh yes, there's a lag. Mm. There's a lag because uh, they're used to uh, one kind of behaviors, one, one kind of management. And then you, you don't change that from one, one day to the other. Mm. It's, not, not, it's not like that. They have to start gaining trust that, okay, so I can speak up. So um, my coworker was vulnerable and it, it was okay to, to be that, okay, maybe I'll try. So I don't know. It's, it's a long-term project. Yeah. It's true. That's why you said a moment ago, you've got to decide if you're committed to it or not. Yeah. And it's totally. one of the first things you've got to do. Totally. Um, any tools that books that you read or research that you did that, that if you were going to recommend to somebody uh -huh. and say, you know, this is a great place to start. Well, um, <clears throat> there's a great book that's called The Fearless Organization mm. by uh, Dr. Uh, Amy Edmondson. Okay. Uh, she's a researcher at Harvard mm. and uh, she, she's, she talks a lot about uh, psychological safety. Okay. It's like her area. So the Fearless Organization is a great book. There's a, um, a documentary at Netflix. Okay. It's The Case Against Boeing. Mm. So uh, it's a documentary that, said, that talks about the mistakes that were made about the 737 MAX mm. that resulted in two crashes and uh, like a billion... Um, uh, billion like cost for for Boeing, and uh, one thing that it makes very explicit it was that the team at Boeing, the the quality team, the the managers, they were like they were lacking psychological safety yes. um, in a serious way. Mm. So if someone at Boeing uh, spoke up against a uh, quality issue, uh, he'll get fired. You know. Wow. So it's like the darkest side of the lack of psychological safety. So it's a good, good documentary. It's, um, uh, it, 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 it builds up the case of psychological safety and builds up the case against Boeing. <laughs> <laughs> sadly for Boeing. Yeah, sadly. Uh, which is, you know, is really quite shocking because businesses in general seem to be a lot more lightened in the 2020s than they were, you know, even in the 1980s or 1990s. Yeah. So, so it's it's actually sad to hear that there are still large organizations that this is an issue, yeah. and which is a little bit of a wake up call because it's those organizations have the money to invest in tr their leaders, invest in training, invest yeah. in creating safe environments and good cultures. Um, but if that's still a problem for them small companies are still at risk. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So, uh, yeah, that's good for good that you're, you're sharing that as it sounds like you might need to bring that to the United States. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, um, 
I don't want to take up too much of your time. We're here at the retreat. And uh -huh. You're supposed to be spending time with, yeah. with your spouse and your friends. So <laughs> I, I did want to catch you for a few minutes. And, okay. and certainly what you shared is valuable uh -huh. just in the few minutes we've been together. But maybe I can have you back. We could connect via yes. the internet. Of course. Talk yes. Podcast with Fox. Yes. It's been, a, it's been a, a great time here with you and Christine. And um, it's such a great subject to talk. It's, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm really in love with... Uh, uh, leadership and psychological safety and changes and we were talking about the lean the lean moments the mindsets that we have to to, to make mm -hmm. to make lean work right yeah well in in fact uh, you said that something that and again that's one of the reasons i like i gotta have him on my podcast to share this because really nothing will work uh -huh. lean six sigma new computer system bring in robots, you know, whatever you want to, major change you want to do, if psychological safety is an issue, uh -huh. nothing else is going to work. Yeah, yeah. You know? And so, uh, but yeah, thank you for sharing that, thank that you. initial insight. I think that's going to be valuable to, to our viewers. Okay, thank you. Flavio, thank you so much. Joe, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thanks for joining us for this episode of A Leader's Journey podcast. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to our channel.